Hi, welcome to our video academy. This video shows best practices in exploring time series data in Visplor. An important step of every data science project is to understand your data and to discover data issues. We take a look at data completeness, value distributions, and several types of patterns. We will explore data from solar power generation. This dataset is part of every Visplor installation, so feel free to try everything on your own. After the data is loaded, a good place to start is the first cockpit, called Trends and Distributions. A first step is to get an overview of the variables by statistics. To find interesting variables, you can sort them by one of the shown statistics. For example, the number of distinct values. This shows that some rainfall time series have only a single value, namely zero. Distinct is also helpful to find variables with rather discrete steps, like this wind speed here. A click on the name shows the time series in the other views. Now we want to look at the completeness of the data. Click percent missing to see which time series have lots of missing values. When you have missing values, a next step is to see how the gaps in the data are distributed. For this, let's switch the tab to heat maps. Here again, each time series is represented as a row. To see the distribution of missing values, click on the name of the statistic above the color map. Now we can choose the percentage of missing data. Time is visualized from left to right. Orange cells are days with missing values. To focus on variables with lots of missing values, you can order the variables. Click on the word variables and then order them by the overall percentage of missing values. This provides a good overview of data completeness. For example, many time series from the location Eastwood have a pretty long gap from July 14th to the end of August as well as a separate short gap on November the 7th. Let's click on that day to see the gap in detail and zoom in. Short gaps like this could be filled with interpolated values, but this is shown in another video. Overall, however, the overview can help you to decide which periods you can use for downstream steps of an analysis and which periods may be missing in too many relevant time series. As the next step of the exploration workflow, it's good practice to look at univariate distributions. So let's switch to the tab called histograms. Histograms are a good method for visualizing the distribution of quantitative variables. This shows a small histogram for each variable. In general, it's good to check if the distribution matches your expectation. It could be interesting to look at variables that show multiple peaks or have a skewed distribution. In this data, the distribution of apparent power Bright County has a long tail. Look at the time series view. This shows daily patterns with peaks and explains the long tail. But What's also interesting here is that after half of the data, the pattern seems to change. Visplor enables us to use the visualization as a user interface to drill down further. First, we make sure that the selection mode is set to time intervals. Now, let's simply select the time span after the change of the structure in the view. The status line at the bottom shows us that we selected 12 weeks and 6 days, which corresponds to approximately 55% of the data. And up here, we see the exact borders of the selected interval. All the other views also highlight the selected time period. This enables us to analyze this period in detail. In particular, the small histograms have changed their order. The variables on top are those where the selected period has a different value distribution than for the rest of the time. This makes it easy to find variables that also changed roughly at the same time. For example, the time series 
imported reactive power eastward shows a significant drop. Such discoveries are very important because they mean that something has happened to the process and parts of the data might be outdated. When you build a predictive model, for example, data that is outdated could have a negative impact on the prediction quality. But how can we detect trends and jumps a bit more systematically? Let's revisit the heat maps view for this and clean up a bit. We filter the variables to voltages. And we don't want to focus on a specific time period anymore, so let's reset the focus. For learning about trends, let's change the statistic of the color map back to the mean. Now, what does this visualization want to tell us? For each time series, a red area means a day with a high average and blue means low average. Now, we have a large number of time series here. To tidy up the visualization, we can sort them again. For this, we click on the word variables again and sort them by similarity. This puts variables with similar temporal patterns close together. Now this shows some interesting patterns. For example, the blue periods in the second half of July for phase voltage Eastwood A and B show a period of low voltage. Let's have a more detailed look at that. Select a time series. Now you see how it goes down in July, which corresponds to the blue cells in the heat map above. Select a second one as well using the check mark. And it's a similar story. We can emphasize the trend even more. The view offers some additional features, in particular trend overlays. Here we switch on moving averages. You can also adjust how strong the smoothing is. If you look closely, you'll see in the heat map that phase voltage B from Cloudington shows a similar drop, even though it's from another location. Let's find out if this period is a general anomaly in other variables as well. We simply select the period and scroll down a bit. And indeed, the voltage harmonic distortion at Sunrise Bay is suspiciously high. Assume we want to ignore this anomalous period for the rest of our analysis. We can filter it out with a single click. Now this gap is wasting some space here. Let's hide it. For this, the time series view offers the feature called Hide Empty Periods. We can use the slider to adjust how long a gap must be in order to be collapsed. Now let's look at the heat maps again for some other patterns. Do you see the recurring red boxes here? This means that some time series have high average values every 7 days. So we have just discovered weekly patterns. For modeling and analyzing long-term trends, it can be important to note details about cyclic patterns and their change over time. So let's take a closer look at them. The heat maps can easily be reconfigured for looking at cyclic patterns. Click on the axis label to change the subdivision. Let's go for a day of week. This view now tells us which days of the week are above or below average for each time series. Now say we want to find those with a lot of variation across the days. Let's sort the time series again. This time by the variance of the normalized means. This view now tells us that it's common for a voltage harmonic distortion time series to have higher values on weekends, especially on Sundays. And maybe the daily pattern also changes. Let's drill down to daily patterns. We can use this plus button here to refine by hour. As you see, you can split the axis as often as you need to. We now see the average daily pattern of each time series for each day of the week. Okay, that's a lot of information. So let's take a deep breath and take a second to interpret what we see here. The red areas are not aligned horizontally. 
This means that different time series have their peaks at different times of the day. Let's for example compare the voltage harmonic distortion from Bright County and Cloudington. Now, how can we compare the time series plots considering that they have different scales? Click the label of the y-axis to normalize the time series in the view. This makes comparing their cycles much easier. For daily cycles, the moving average is also too coarse, so let's adjust this. And then let's zoom in. Here we notice that the blue time series of Cloudington has its lows and peaks a bit earlier than the red time series of Bright County. You could compensate for this lag, but that's covered in a different video. Here just note that the two time series seem to be correlated. So let's look at that correlation a bit closer. Open the scatter plot. This view seems to confirm the correlation. However, we need to be careful. When we zoom out, we see that the time series have a slightly different behavior from October onwards. So let's focus on that period. And now we see the correlation after October is different. It could be nice to compare the regression lines of both periods. Just click the compare button up here and say we want to compare the selection to the rest of the data. This adds one more finding to our exploration of this data. Okay, it's time to step back a bit and recap. Within a few minutes, we delved very deep into the data. We made lots of discoveries and used them to go further in the analysis. This allows us to gain deep insights, which are crucial before we would start to build a predictive model of the data, for example. So let's summarize a bit what you've seen about the process of data exploration. We started by looking at some global statistics of the variables. Then we investigated the presence and distribution of gaps in the data. We looked at distributions in histograms, which may reveal process changes. Then we looked at trends and jumps and continued with an analysis of cycles. Finally, we moved on to a first glimpse on correlations. Of course, this is still nowhere near to everything. For example, outliers are an important part of data exploration as well. And for inspecting correlations and clusters, it is helpful to study pairs of variables. Both is possible in Visplore and we invite you to watch the other videos to learn how easily you can do that. For now, we conclude this video on data exploration practices and hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching.